Streaming live now on News8000.com. You're watching WKBT Lacrosse. This is News 8 Now, this morning. Good morning, everybody. I'm Alexandra Carter on this Thursday, March 21st, 2024. Checking in now with News 8 meteorologist Bill Grawl. Uh, Bill, you've got some snow in the forecast to tell us about. I do, and it's been a while since we've had yeah. some snow across the upper Midwest, so it uh, might be time to uh, relearn those wintry driving skills, make sure you have the winter gear handy and those shovels handy as well, because uh, they will be needed most likely heading into tomorrow morning. Now, first of all, before we get to that, yesterday's highs, lots of sunshine, but breezy and colder. Highs only in the 30s, 32 in Eau Claire, 35 in Black River Falls, 37 in La Crosse, some uh, 40s down far south. Prairie du Chien hit 40, Boscobel 42. Uh, skies are cloudy this morning. Again, the Almanac showing that high of 36 and a low of 23 yesterday, so below the average high of 48. Records will stay safe today. 75 the high in 1911, three below the record low in 1965. Uh, sun comes up this morning at 7.05. It'll be behind cloud cover, though, for the bulk, if not all, of the day. And you can see radar showing some light returns. Uh, this is not reaching the ground. The air is very dry near the surface. Maybe some flurries over here. And uh, so don't be completely shocked if you see a few flurries in your neighborhood uh, today. But the main event comes tonight. Now, temperatures between about 20 and 28 degrees. We'll see highs today in the upper 30s, right around 39. Looks like the snow will develop in the La Crosse area after around 10 p.m. or so later this evening. More on that coming up in just a few minutes. All right, Bill, we will be watching. Thank you. Time now for the stories making headlines right now. Parts of the federal government could briefly shut down this weekend despite a bipartisan budget deal. The issue is time and whether the package can overcome hurdles by the end of tomorrow. You see that clock ticking there. Currently, it appears to have enough support to pass, but lawmakers who oppose the deal have ways to slow down the process. In the House, expediting with the suspension of the rules requires a supermajority. In the Senate, a speedy, unanimous consent vote fails if a single person objects. More Americans arrived in Florida last night after waiting weeks to evacuate Haiti. The island nation now descending into chaos with the resignation of its leader and escalating violence among armed gangs. CBS News' Jared Hill has the latest for us from New York. We're finally reunited with Julian, um, our two-year-old son. It's been a long two weeks for Philippe Armand trying to get his son and more than a dozen family members back on U.S. soil amid the turmoil in Haiti. Everyone made it safe and sound. Their flight from Haiti to Florida, one of a handful, planned and coordinated by Florida emergency management officials. We're committed to rescuing Floridians. Turmoil began in Haiti earlier this month after a mass prison outbreak. The prime minister announced his resignation last week and is currently under U.S. protection. Haiti officials are now working on creating a transitional government. Yesterday, armed gangs launched a new round of attacks near the capital, Port-au-Prince, leaving bodies in the streets. The U.S. Diplomatic Security Service posted video of dozens of Americans boarding a chartered helicopter in Haiti yesterday, flown to the Dominican Republic capital of Santo Domingo. The situation on the ground is one of the biggest factors into determining the frequency at which we can do this. The State Department says demand and the reliability of commercial transportation will also determine how often it can operate flights to get as many Americans out of Haiti as they can. The State Department says there are U.S. officials in Santo Domingo to provide consular services to those evacuated Americans. At this point, though, people brought to the Dominican Republic are responsible for finding their own transportation from there back on U.S. soil. The former deputy director of the Milwaukee Election Commission found guilty on three misdemeanor counts of election fraud and one felony count of misconduct in public office. Kimberly Zapata admitted requesting three military ballots under fake voter names and sending them to a state representative. Her attorneys argue she aimed to expose flaws in Wisconsin's electoral system as a whistleblower. Prosecutors, though, telling the jury to focus on her actions, not those intentions, saying that she, that she damaged the very system she was entrusted to safeguard. So what did she tell us? She told us that she th fabricated three individuals for the purpose of having ballots issued. That she did this on her work laptop, the computer issued by the city. That she did this using the my or the WIS vote system to gain the address that she had these ballots sent to. 
Zapata now facing up to five years in prison and up to $13,000 in fines. A sentencing hearing has been set for early May. Three people are lucky to be alive this morning after their hot air balloon crashed in Rochester, Minnesota. Take a look. The incident happened at about 640 yesterday evening after the balloon crashed into a set of power lines and caught fire. You saw some sparks right there in this video. First responders on the scene telling Rochester CBS affiliate KIMT nobody was seriously hurt in the incident. The Federal Aviation Administration and the National Transportation Safety Board said the they will investigate the incident. And Winona State University has a new leader at the helm this morning. The Minnesota State Colleges and Universities Board of Trustees announcing Kenneth Jans will assume the role of president effective immediately. Jans has been serving as interim president since August following the departure of former president Scott Olson. This isn't Jans' first experience with the university. From 2008 to 2023, he held the positions of associate vice president for academic affairs and chief information officer. Have you ever dreamed of trading places with the conductor of the Lacrosse Symphony Orchestra? If you've seen Maestro, maybe you have. Now's your chance. The orchestra's annual conductor wannabe competition is back, and they're looking for the next Maestro. Contestants were announced yesterday, along with the nonprofits they'll be raising money for. It's up to you now to vote for your favorite candidate. Each vote must be a minimum of $2, with proceeds split between the candidate's chosen charity and the orchestra. As we all know in our community, we love collaborations and helping a lot of people all at the same time. It just makes it a lot more fun. The winner and runner-up who raised the most money will have the opportunity to make their conductor debut at the symphony's May 4th concert. The competition starts today and runs until April 30th. The time now is 6.06, .06, still ahead on your morning news. The average yearly bonus for a Wall Street broker dropped last year. But don't feel too bad, it's still more than twice the average household income in the U.S. We'll take a look at that and more coming up in your consumer news. The Biden administration has a new roadmap to make America's cars greener. I'm Bradley Blackburn with details on the strict new emissions requirements and when they may go into effect. For now, we're sending you to break with something to put the good in your morning. Iconic toy maker Mattel announcing plans to open a second theme park, and this one is closer to us. Mattel Adventure Park Kansas City will be a licensing partnership with Epic Resort Destinations Construction. It's scheduled to break ground later this year and open in 2026. The park will have the attractions like those at Mattel Adventure Park in Arizona. That includes Hot Wheels roller coasters and a larger than life Barbie beach house. There will also be a Barbie themed flying theater and the Barbie rooftop restaurant and bar. Don't go anywhere. Your consumer news at News 8 Now this morning is after the break. We know you care. But if this is all too real for you and your loved ones, make the call. Because we care too. Home instead. To us, it's personal. T-Mobile's coverage in my area is wonderful. We have eight acres, and it gives you peace of mind to know that you're going to have a reliable signal. We enjoy hiking. We enjoy the outdoors. The coverage has been great. And after investing billions to light up our network from big cities to small towns, T-Mobile is America's largest and fastest 5G network. See for yourself. Try T-Mobile's network free for three months. Your phone, our network, no strings. There's never been a better time to enjoy quality Flex Steel furniture than right now during the Flex Steel factory authorized sale at Drury's in Fountain. You'll save on the latest casual sofas, chairs that say, take me home, stunning sectionals, even luxurious leather sofas and recliners. Every Flex Steel style is included in your choice of over 2,000 designer fabrics and leathers, all at the best prices of the year. Unlimited choices, big savings, and special 12-month interest refinancing. It's happening now at Drury's in Fountain. The Honda you want is here. Get a great offer on the stylish HRV or the Civic, which car and driver called fun to drive.
There's never been a better time to drive in the moment with Honda. Buy online, reserve from select dealers, or hurry into your local Honda dealer today. Ho-Chunk Gaming Wisconsin invites you to experience the thrill of gaming like never before. With six locations across the state, there's something for everyone. Whether you're a slots enthusiast, a poker pro, or prefer the excitement of table games, we've got you covered. Plus, indulge in delicious dining options, live entertainment, and exclusive promotions that add even more excitement to your visit. Come join the fun at Ho-Chunk Gaming Wisconsin. If your tub or shower is less than you'd like it to be, then you owe it to yourself to visit the board store during the 2024 Early Bird Home Show. If you'd like a shower, rain shower, personal shower, shelves, safety grab bars, you can get a complete unit as low as $79.80. Call or visit the board store during the Early Bird Home Show for safety, convenience, and beauty in your new bathroom. Call or visit today. Hey, welcome back and a good Thursday morning to you. It is currently 610. Check of the school cast for today does include plenty of clouds, unlike yesterday when we saw so much sunshine, but it's going to be another chilly day with highs generally in the mid to upper 30s, maybe some 40 degree readings far south, uh, right around 39 here in the cross, 27 by the way, at 7 o'clock this morning. So uh, make sure the little ones are prepared. Uh, dog walking forecasts, again, it's going to be dry during the day, maybe a few flurries and spots, but the main event, the snow develops later tonight after around 10 p.m. So Moose looks ready. Uh, Moose is either a really good car rider or maybe he's just tired. Uh, maybe he's on his way home from the dog park or something. But uh, Moose probably hoping to walk with Miranda at some point. Skies are cloudy, but again, it is dry this morning. And that's going to be the trend through most, if not all, of the day, other than maybe a few flurries. Snow arrives tonight into tomorrow morning and more snow and a rain snow mix Sunday, Monday and Tuesday. Very active stretch of weather over the next week or so. Now some light radar returns showing up, but this is not reaching the ground. The air is very dry near the surface locally. Uh, maybe some flurries in this activity to our west, and that's why we may see a few flurries today. But the main event, again, not until later tonight. Current temperatures in the 20s, 20 in Sparta and Black River Falls, 27 in La Crosse, 28 in Prairie du Chien. And again, we'll see highs today around 39 degrees with plenty of clouds. I will discuss how much snow to expect tonight with my eight day forecast coming up in about three and a half minutes. In your consumer news this morning, the FCC says it's investigating Amazon and other retailers for the alleged marketing and sales of wireless signal jammers. Those devices are illegal to use, sell or market in this country. The agency confirmed the probe in a statement yesterday, but did not say which other retailers were being investigated. Amazon did not immediately respond to a request for comment. The news of the investigation comes after NBC News reported signal jammers were apparently available online on Amazon's marketplace. Last year was a bit of a tough year for those working on Wall Street, relatively speaking. The average bonus for Wall Street bankers dipped by 2% to $176,500, well below the $240,000 paid in 2021. That's likely due to mixed earnings on Wall Street last year and underwhelming merger and acquisition activity. Of course, a little perspective is in order here. The average Wall Street bonus was itself almost two and a half times higher than the median U.S. household income, according to census data. The maker of the blockbuster weight loss drugs Ozempic and Wagovi is funding a new supercomputer. The Novo Nordisk Foundation awarding a contract to computing company Eviden to build the supercomputer. It'll be powered by N NVIDIA's artificial intelligence technology using the latest computer chips from NVIDIA. The powerful new supercomputer will be used to discover new medications and treatments. Eviden says it'll be one of the most powerful in the world with the ability to process vast amounts of data. The Biden administration and the EPA have announced new rules for automakers, tightening emissions restrictions to fight climate change. Bradley Blackburn has details on the new roadmap for the single largest source of carbon pollution in the country. Today we're setting new pollution standards. The Biden administration is putting the pedal to the metal in its drive to make Americans' cars greener. We're cleaning our air, we're protecting public health, and we're creating good-paying American jobs. 
New regulations require automakers to cut emissions across their entire fleet of new light duty cars and trucks, starting with model year 2027. We understand that consumer choice is paramount. The EPA says the changes will help drivers use less fuel and lower maintenance costs, an estimated $6,000 in savings over the lifetime of a new vehicle. They expect $13 billion in public health benefits from cleaner air and a 7 billion ton reduction in carbon pollution. Over time, this rule is actually going to eliminate carbon pollution that is more than what we actually emit across the country in a single year. An earlier version of the rules was even stricter, but the EPA tapped the brakes to give automakers more time to shift to electric vehicles. Right now, less than 10% of new vehicles sold in the U.S. are electric. And while EV sales are growing by double digits, the pace has slowed. In order to get to a much more ambitious level of sales, a lot has to change. We have to invest in charging infrastructure. On day one, I will terminate crooked Joe Biden's insane electric vehicle mandate. In a speech Saturday, former President Trump promised to reverse the new regulations if elected. It's an open question whether the plan passes go after November. The EPA says more than 100 electric and plug-in hybrid models are already available in the U.S. They project battery-powered vehicles could make up more than 50% of the market by the 2030s. That's it for your morning consumer news. The time now is 6.16. Let's check in with News 8 meteorologist Bill Grawl for a look at today's forecast. Hi, Bill. Hi, Alexandra. Uh, get ready for some snow to return to the region. We haven't seen a lot of snow uh, this snow season, but uh, some is in the cards overnight tonight and into part of our Friday. Before we get to that, first of all, check the March high temperatures and another blue box for a change. Uh, yesterday, a high of 36. Uh, that's 20 degrees colder than the high of 56 that we saw on Tuesday, only the third day this month with a below average high temperature. 16 of the days have been above average, including that stri uh, string of 70s last month. Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Skies are cloudy this morning, but nothing falling from these clouds. 27 at the airport, 26 downtown at the station. Winds are much lighter, and that's going to be the trend through the day. 22 for you folks in Eau Claire. It does feel like 14, though, with a light north-northeasterly breeze at 6 miles per hour. So, temperatures primarily in the 20s locally, uh, including that 27 in La Crosse, also 27 in Winona, 20 in Black River Falls and Sparta, 23 in Viroqua. And as you can see here, winds are generally six miles per hour or less. In fact, calm for many. So a stark contrast to the past couple of days when it has been so breezy. Now some light radar returns, but none of this is reaching the ground. The air is very dry near the surface. Maybe some flurries uh, off to the west here. So can't be uh, fully uh, uh, can't fully rule out, I should say, flurries and spots during the day today. But the main event will hold off until this area of low pressure over Montana kind of tracks southeast along this frontal boundary and increases the moisture locally with snow developing later tonight. Sky Tracker showing the cloud cover in play for today. But uh, again, really nothing falling from those clouds until after about 9 or 10 o'clock this evening. Snow develops quickly from northwest to southeast. Could see a heavier band of snow set up across portions of Iowa. Far southern and southwestern Wisconsin, maybe including uh, portions of Winnesheek, Alamakee, uh, Alamake, Crawford, and Richland counties. Then that snow quickly moves out by mid-morning with decreasing clouds heading into Friday night. Now, with that snow in play, a winter weather advisory hoisted by the National Weather Service for all areas. I'm expecting a general one to four inch snowfall, maybe some localized higher amounts, especially in those far southern counties that I just mentioned. A wintry mix or some light icing possible in spots as well. Bottom line, the Friday morning commute will be wintry, so be prepared for that. Ice trackers showing that minimal icing potential uh, with that wintry mix uh, around the uh, snow activity as well. Now, temperatures today will be chilly once again, mid to upper 30s in the La Crosse area, maybe some 40 degree readings far south, uh, right around 39 in La Crosse, 37 in Osseo, 38 in Fountain City, 37 in Chippewa Falls, 38 today in Eau Claire. Tonight, that's when the snow moves in, lows in the upper 20s in the La Crosse area, upper 20s to around 30 far south, uh, probably some mid 20s in parts of Monroe, Jackson and Clark counties, and right around 25 or 26 for Eau Claire and Chippewa Falls.
So my forecast for today, plenty of clouds but dry primarily, maybe some flurries, lighter winds with a high of 39. Snow develops tonight after about 10 o'clock or so here in the La Crosse area. Again, an alert night and alert day for tomorrow morning due to the wintry driving conditions as that snow tapers mid-morning. 39 tomorrow and Saturday. Brief break on Saturday, more snow likely on Sunday, maybe some additional accumulations and then mainly rain Monday with highs near 50 and then a chance of rain and snow showers next Tuesday. Tuesday highs around 40 and then mainly dry next Wednesday and Thursday. Another system could bring some rain or a mix late in the week around Friday. So it's been a while, Alexander, since we've had to deal with some snow, but be prepared for that tomorrow morning. Yeah, where's that groundhog that said we were having an early spring? Anyone heard from him? Time now is 620. Still ahead on your morning news. A new program is helping stroke patients recover through music. Coming up, we'll take a look at how the stroke Astra program works and how it's impacting patients. Six of our area basketball players making the cut for the WBCA All-State teams, plus the Bucks looking for a big win in Boston without their two-time MVP in the lineup. We'll have those highlights coming up in the Blitz. Washington has become corrupt. Career politicians sell themselves to special interests and end up working for them and not you. I've worked hard, been fortunate. I don't need their special interest money and I won't take it. If you decide to elect me as your next senator, I'll donate my entire salary to a Wisconsin charity every year. I'm Eric Covey. I can't be bought and I'll put you and our country first. I approve this message. Did you touch the thermostat? Did you turn it up? Of course not. Did somebody fiddle with the thermostat? Dude, it's 85 degrees. 85? Do you have any idea what a couple degrees will do to our gas bill? Why is it so hot here? Someone turned up the heat. God. What do you think you're doing? I like to sleep with my window open. You are not supposed to touch the thermostat. It's Slam Dam Savings Time here at Carl's. Where you get the widest selection of top name brand appliances. And service. We've been your servicing dealer since 56. Save up to 40% on these top name brand appliances. And all TVs are on sale. And save up to 50% on in-stock Perfect Sleeper and iComfort mattresses. Also, our new grills have arrived. It's Slam Dunk Savings Time, now at Carl's. Carl's are servicing dealer since 1956. They say that breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Well, they are correct. Enjoy one of our tasty bagel sandwiches paired with a caramel frappe. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. After I decided my pain was too much and my doctor actually suggested that I do visit the Good Feet store. Pretty amazing when they put the arch supports in your shoe and you walk around and you realize there's not pain and you think, how can this arch support in my shoe make my back pain go away? But it works. And how can it make my knee pain go away? It was incredible. Hip, knee, or back pain? See if arch supports can help you at the Good Feet Store. Welcome to the Blitz. The high school basketball season is now officially in the books. For many of our senior athletes, it was a year these young men will never forget. Six of them being named to the WBCA All-State teams. Let's run through the full list. Starting in Division II, West Salem's Tamarian Henderson saved his best season for last, leading the Panthers to their third straight trip to the state tournament. Henderson averaged over 19 points a game for the 25-4 and four Cooley Conference champs. He'll be headed to Division II University of Mary on a basketball scholarship this upcoming fall. Also in Division II, Onalaska's Evan Anderson makes the cut. The MVC Player of the Year got to the Hilltoppers to an 18-7 record, a perfect 12-0 record in conference play, leading his squad with over 23 points a game, finishing his prep career with 1,886 points. Anderson will be headed to Division I program, South Dakota. In Division III, no surprise here, another dominant run for GET's Cody Schmitz as the senior was named Cooley Conference Player of the Year for the third straight season. Schmitz averaged a league best 30.1 points, 11 rebounds a game. Wraps up his high school career with 2,654 points. Two seniors making the All-State team in D4, Aquinas' Walter Burns, finished with over 1,000 points for the Blue Golds, 
leading his team to a 23-6 record and a spot in the state tournament. Burns averaged 16 points, almost seven rebounds a game this past season. Joining him in D4 is Luther's Logan Barr. The senior averaged over 23 points, just under 11 rebounds a game this past year. Barr led the Knights to a state title in his junior year. UWL recruit was an absolute sharpshooter during his final year, knocking down 50% of his threes. And in D5, what a year for Cashton's Noah Hemmersbach. The scenic bluffs player of the year helped guide the Eagles to a sectional final berth, averaging just under 24 points a game in his final year at Cashton High. Let's go to the pros. Bucks playing shorthanded last night against the Celtics. No Giannis in the lineup for Milwaukee. Boston taking full advantage of it. 23 points in the first half for Jason Tatum. Celtics up 13 at the break, and Boston continuing to pour it on in the second half. Count this, plus the foul. Celtics go up 21. But back come the Bucks in the fourth. Chris Middleton knocks down the three. Milwaukee within 12. Then with less than three to go, it's Bobby Portis from long range. Bucks cut the deficit to just three. Other end, Celtics answer. Tatum cannot connect, but Kristaps Porzingis is there for the rebound and the putback. Boston goes back up seven. Bucks not going away, though. Dame, step back three is right on the money. That cuts it back to four. Then with less than 20 seconds to go. Comfort, style, and savings. Come in now for the FlexSteel Spring Gallery Custom Order and Floor Sample Sale. Get 50% off select floor models and 40% off all custom orders. International Furniture, I-90, Exit 2, La Crosse. Here's California banker Eric Hovde, running for U.S. Senate. But Hovde's lifestyle? Pure California. CEO of a billion-dollar bank. Here's Hovde's over $7 million Laguna Beach mansion. And three years in a row, Eric Hubdy was named one of Orange County's most influential residents. Mm. Multimillionaire California banker Eric Hubdy. On Wisconsin's side, don't bank on it. When Senate is responsible for the content of this ad. Hi, it's Elvis Duran. Thanks for listening. I think what makes our show unique is perspective. Many different voices, many different points of view. If you're going to say don't ask me, we're going to ask you. <laughs> if you want well. to. We're always fun. Oh, oh my God. God. Oh, it's so good. Because we like you. We're plugged in. It's kind of fantastic. Hi, it's Elvis Duran from the Mixed Morning Show. Wake up with us every morning on Mix 96. Hi, I'm Brody from Great River Harley-Davidson. The brand new 2024 models have arrived, and we could not be more excited to get you on yours. In addition to a bunch of cool new colors, our Street Glides and Rogue Glides are completely redesigned for 2024. The all-new Street Glide and Rogue Glide feature a brand new fairing design, LED lights, upgraded engine, and a brand new 9-inch touchscreen display, plus more. Stop by Great River Harley or come out to one of our events and experience the ride for yourself. The High V Snack Sale, this Friday through Sunday. Get Pringles, just $1.48. Doritos, just $3.48. Cheese and snack crackers, just $1.99. And Little Debbie Snacks, also just $1.99. Plus, get these other great snack time deals. Don't miss the snack sale all weekend long. This Friday through Sunday, only at High Beam. For the second year in a row, Chevy Equinox has been ranked by JD Power number one in new vehicle quality for compact SUVs. In other words, it's really good, right from the start. Chevy Equinox. Do that again. Connected by OnStar. Get 1.9% financing on all 2024 Equinox models. Or get 1,500 cash allowance. Plus, current Chevy owners get an additional 1,000 cash allowance. Visit hometownchevy.com. Comfort, style, and savings. Come in now for the FlexSteel Spring Gallery Custom Order and Floor Sample Sale. Get 50% off select floor models and 40% off all custom orders. International Furniture, I-90, Exit 2, La Crosse. The 8000 Plus app. Stream on your time. The news continues on News 8 Now. Expect more. 
Welcome back in your morning medical news. If you have dark skin, you may want to think twice about relying on pulse oximeter readings. A new report revealing these devices, which measure blood oxygen levels, are more likely to give inaccurate results for black patients compared to white patients. The study found black people in the hospital are 32% more likely to have their oxygen levels overestimated by at least four percentage points. Researchers say the issue stems from how these pulse oximeters are designed. They send light beams through the finger, but they're not calibrated for darker skin tones, which can throw off the sensors. Government scientists are weighing in on the mysterious sickness known as Havana syndrome. The illness was first detected in 2016 when a group of diplomats stationed in Havana all reported mysterious symptoms, including head trauma, dizziness, and extreme headaches. But the National Institutes of Health is releasing two new studies casting doubt on Havana syndrome. The first said that victim brain scans revealed few clinical differences when compared to scans in healthy people. The second study looked at 30 people with similar jobs to those who were reporting the symptoms. Researchers found that by most clinical and biomarker measures, the two groups were the same. An art meets science program is harnessing the power of creative group music to help those who have suffered from a stroke improve mobility and cognitive ability. CBS's Danya Backus introduces us to the Strokestra. At this music collaboration, every bow spill, trombone slide, and maraca shake is associated with rehabilitation. Since 2015, musicians from the United Kingdom's Royal Philharmonic Orchestra have conducted Strokestra. Pairing up their musicians with stroke patients and others with limited mobility to use music to help them recover. Well, you didn't even worry or think about your pain. 87-year-old Marie Garcia recently fell and broke her arm. She's had limited mobility. But on this day, it was all about the beat. They gave me drumsticks to pretend I was playing, and you just moved with the music. It was very, very relaxing and entertaining. This year, the Royal Philharmonic brought the program to the U.S. It teamed up with the University of California, Irvine Health, its music students, and the Philharmonic Society of Orange County. This is a wonderful example of applying the power of music to a healing environment. Dr. Lisa Gibbs is the chief of geriatric medicine and gerontology at UCI Health. She says Strokestra helps remove social and physical barriers for stroke survivors and other patients. The brain is, is just a fantastic organ. We have pathways that work, maybe in a stroke pathways that don't work, but somehow music figures out how, could, how to circumvent those. Studies done in the UK show the program has physical, cognitive, social, and emotional benefits. At UCI, Strokestra hit the right notes of harnessing the power of music to bring joy and mobility. UCI Health hopes to keep Strokestra going. It is to continue the program with UCI Health. Finding professional clothing that meets your budget constraints can be difficult, but yesterday Western Technical College made it possible for everybody to get the clothes they need. Western's annual Suits for Success offers free, gently used professional clothing. Items like suits, blouses, sweaters, dresses, dress shoes, and even medical scrubs were all available. All of the clothes at the event were donated by the community. The event, which celebrated its milestone 10th year, was free to attend and open to the community. And Rudy's Drive-In is back open for the season. The fence came down yesterday, marking the kickoff of the 91st season in Lacrosse. You can expect the same delicious products the Cooley region has come to know and love over the decades, but they do warn you, you could expect to wait a little longer this year because they are short-staffed. So, also, if you know anybody that is good on a pair of roller skates, tell them Rudy's needs some extra help. In the world of video games, women are often underrepresented and overlooked, but at this year's Game Developers Conference in San Francisco, female creators from around the world are stepping into the spotlight. Sean Chitness reports. I've been playing video games ever since I remember. Laya B loves video games and has made a career out of it. She's attending the Game Developers Conference this week in San Francisco to help highlight the work done by women just like her in the industry all over the world. 
it wasn't until I was a teenager that I actually realized that it was seen as something male dominated or when I went to the first um, uh, video game store of my neighborhood, I was the only girl there. Today, she's the co-founder and CEO of an independent video game studio in Uruguay. And even in 2024, there aren't many women like her in this industry. A survey of developers this year shows that more than two thirds are men. Laya says that number only increases outside of the U.S., and she estimates that only about 3 to 5 percent have leadership roles like her. It's really important for women to be out there making video games to create a cultural impact for other women. But while only a third of developers are women, Laya says they make up about half of the people playing video games. It's important that women are well represented and they actually look and talk like real women. She's also the president of the Uruguay Game Developers Association and works to get more women in the industry throughout Latin America. We used to have like very little representation and sometimes it was over sexualized or uh, it was made like to be in the in the male gaze instead of, of, of something that actually represents us. And as a woman running a video game studio, Laia can have a direct impact on the characters we see in games and how we play them, including this one she helped create. We don't ask you what your gender is. You can just choose how the way you want to uh, be perceived. And for example, uh, the girl in the tutorial is you not know, a damsel in distress. She's actually helping you. And, and these small little things, I think, that will change the perception of how people see video games and how they perceive the world. And that's the progress that keeps her going. Excited to see more women in gaming reaching new levels of the industry. Video games actually have the, the power to change the world in, in the way we perceive it. So yes, I think that it's super important and that's what keeps me here. The time now is 6.35. Let's check in with News 8 meteorologist Bill Grawl to tell us what to expect on our morning commute. Uh, this morning might seem like a walk in the park compared to what we have coming our way. Right, Bill? Yeah, exactly right. Uh, conditions fine this morning. Even this evening's commute should be fine. It's tomorrow morning's commute, which could be a little dicey with wintry driving conditions expected. Now, a live look through city cam shows uh, still dark. Sunrise time not until 7.05. Cloudy skies, though. And again, it is dry across the region. That's in my drive cast for this Thursday. Plenty of clouds, but dry. Maybe some flurries in spots, but that's about it. Another chilly day with highs only in the upper 30s. Snow doesn't develop. Uh, until later tonight, especially after about 10 p.m. here in La Crosse. Now, there are some radar returns, but most of this not reaching the ground. Maybe some uh, spits and flurries off to the west. So, again, I can't fully rule out a few flurries and spots for today, but the main event arrives tonight. Current temperatures ranging from 20 in Black River Falls and Sparta to 28 in Prairie du Chien, 27 in La Crosse and Winona. And again, chilly again today with below average highs around 39 degrees in La Crosse. I will let you know how much snow to expect with my eight day forecast on the other side of the break. Alexandra. Before we head to break, it's time to look at today's Look Who's 8, starting with Joseph, turning 8 years old today. He loves playing Roblox and spending time with his family. And Mary is turning 88 today. She loves playing cards, going shopping, and spending time with her family. If you know a special someone turning 8 weeks, 8 months, 8 years, 18, 80, or 88 years old soon, we'd love to feature them. Just upload their photo to our website, news8000.com, and look for the Submit Pictures button underneath the Home tab. Coming up, we'll tell you how you can hop into some family fun next Saturday at On Alaska High School's second annual free Easter event. Hey, Lainey, when is the baby coming? <laughs> very, very soon. Dad, what about yours? You're going to... Yeah, okay, well... Washington has become corrupt. Career politicians sell themselves to special interests and end up working for them and not you. I've worked hard, been fortunate. I don't need their special interest money and I won't take it. If you decide to elect me as your next senator, I'll donate my entire salary to a Wisconsin charity every year. I'm Eric Covey. I can't be bought and I'll put you and our country first. I approve this message.
There's never been a better time to enjoy quality Flex Steel furniture than right now during the Flex Steel factory authorized sale at Drury's and Fountain. You'll save on the latest casual sofas, chairs that say, take me home, stunning sectionals, even luxurious leather sofas and recliners. Every Flex Steel style is included in your choice of over 2,000 designer fabrics and leathers, all at the best prices of the year. Unlimited choices, big savings, and special 12-month interest refinancing. It's happening now at Drury's in Fountain. Hi, I'm Brody from Great River Harley-Davidson. If you haven't been in this year, consider this your invitation to stop by. We will be hosting our Grand American launch party Saturday, March 23rd. We'll be grilling out food, have special prizes for pre-registered guests, and test rides on the all-new Street Glide, Rogue Glide, and other 2024 models. Whether it's your first time on a bike or you've been riding for years, I want to invite you to stop into Great River Harley-Davidson. It's Slam Dunk Savings Time here at Carl's. Where you get the widest selection of top name brand appliances. And service. We've been your servicing dealer since 56. Save up to 40% on these top name brand appliances. And all TVs are on sale. And save up to 50% on in-stock Perfect Sleeper and iComfort mattresses. Also, our new grills have arrived. It's Slam Dunk Savings Time now at Carl's. Carl's your servicing dealer since 1956. P B P B and J P B four way go P before we go P before we go. <laughs> huh. See you tomorrow. Yeah. Welcome back. A good Thursday morning to you at 640. Yesterday is what I like to call deceiving sunshine. Check it out on our time lapse. Uh, lots of blue sky and sunshine for the better part of the day. Just some high clouds towards sunset that actually made for some nice colors in that western sky. Here's the view at about 704 p.m. And then clouds quickly increased overnight and that's what we're waking up to this morning with a mainly cloudy sky. Now temperatures 27 degrees out at the airport 26 downtown at the station winds are light and that's the uh, big difference compared to yesterday and something to note here look at how dry our dew point is how low the number is two degrees and that's why uh, in a moment you'll see some radar returns uh, showing that it may be snowing in parts of the area but the air is so dry it's not reaching the ground 22 degrees in Eau Claire you uh, dew point is only three feels like 14 a little bit of a breeze from the north northeast at six miles per hour so temperatures uh, in the a 10 degree range up around Marquette and Duluth, Minnesota, but locally most spots in the 20s, including 20 in Sparta, 22 in Eau Claire, 27 in La Crosse and Winona, 23 in Viroqua, and 28 in Prairie du Chien. Winds are either light or calm, so a stark contrast to the past couple of days when it has been so windy. Now, here's what I'm talking about. Some radar returns here showing maybe some light snow or flurries in spots, but again, most if not all of that's not reaching the ground. Maybe some flurries out to the west here, and so I can't fully rule out a few flurries in spots today, but the main action will hold off until tonight as this area of low pressure kind of tracks southeast along this frontal boundary, increases the moisture around here, bringing those snow chances later tonight. Sky Tracker showing the cloud cover today but again, also the lack of snow. Uh, but tonight, after about 9, 10, 11 o'clock, that's when that snow quickly develops from northwest to southeast. Now we'll have to watch. There could be a heavier band of snow setting up uh, just to the south of La Crosse from portions of Iowa into uh, southern Wisconsin, maybe clipping far southern parts of our viewing area, Winnishie, Gala, McKee, Crawford, and Richland counties. And then that snow quickly tapers and shifts to the east by mid-morning of our Friday with decreasing clouds into Friday night. Now with the snow on the way, winter weather advisory for tonight into tomorrow morning for all areas. I'm expecting a general one to four inch snowfall, maybe some local localized higher amounts, especially in those far southern counties I mentioned. Winter mix, not completely out of the question, could see a light icing in addition to the snow accumulation. And again, the bottom line, a wintry Friday morning commute, so be prepared for that. Ice tracker shows that minimal icing potential. 
and again a general one to four inch snowfall across the region. Highs today, upper 30s, some 40 degree readings far south, and as we head back to the north, uh, mid to upper 30s uh, towards Osseo and Mondovi and Eau Claire and Chippewa Falls right around 37, 38 degrees. Low tonight in the upper 20s, um, upper 20s to near 30 far south, and then a little bit chillier farther to the north and east, mid 20s in Alma Center and Black River Falls, and low to mid 20s for lows far north with that snow occurring. So for today, mainly cloudy but dry, lighter winds, 39 for the high. Snow develops tonight after about 10 p.m. or so in La Crosse, lows around 29 and then tapers mid-morning tomorrow. 39 tomorrow and Saturday. A brief break from the precip on Saturday, but then more snow likely on Sunday. Could see more accumulations and then change over to rain on Monday with highs near 50 and then some lingering rain or snow showers on Tuesday. Highs near 40. Wednesday and Thursday look dry. Another system could bring some rain or a mix later in the week around Friday. So rather active over the next eight days. Alexander, back to you. Thank you, Bill. The Easter Bunny is coming to town next weekend and making a pre-Easter stop at Onalaska High School. Here to tell us about the second annual Onalaska Community Extravaganza are the organizers. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for being with us this morning. So yeah. just, yeah, tell us uh, what the Extravaganza is and when and where it's taking place. So it'll be taking place at Onalaska High School mm -hmm. next Saturday, March 30th from 1230 to 330. Okay, great. Uh, and it's free to attend, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's great. I know parents are always looking for uh, Easter activities, especially something free. That is really good. And what can attendees expect at this year's event? So it's going to be even bigger and better than last year. We're trying to get it to be fun for the whole family. We're going to have over 6,000 Easter eggs, wow. a squad car, ambulance and fire truck, pending any emergencies, of course. And then Easter Bunny will be running around, have face painters, local businesses will be setting up some vendor booths, and they're going to have lots of giveaways from other local bis businesses as far as gift baskets. Okay, great. And there are some things people can do to increase their chances of winning these, right? Tell us about that. Yes. So if you go on our Facebook event, the Onalaska Community Extravaganza Facebook event, um, there's a link to pre-register. Okay. Anybody that pre-registers is going to get extra entries into winning those door prizes. Okay. And so do people have to pre-register or is it just kind of recommended? No, nope, it's just recommended so we have an idea of numbers, but you can show up and register the day of the event. Too. Okay. And then that pre-registration, you may increase your odds of yes. winning. So good to do that. And what website can we visit to do that? Um, if you go on Facebook mm -hmm. and search our, our event, the Onalaska Community Extravaganza, you'll find the link right there. Okay, perfect. Um, and so what are the age groups for the egg hunts and what times will those begin? Yep, so we're going to start our egg hunts at 1 o'clock. Okay. We have three age groups this year, 0 to 4, 5 to 7, and then 8 to 10. Okay, so we're going to start them at 1 o'clock and just run them continuously back to back. Okay, and uh, how can attendees support the Onalaska School District Food Pantry during the event? So we'll be collecting non-perishable food goods as, long, as well as donations too. And if you're not able to attend the event, feel free to drop off anything at any of our offices, Union Home Mortgage, at Properties, or True North Chiropractic, all in Onalaska. Okay, great. Uh, what, and so we talked about door prizes, but can you tell us a little more about maybe what kind of prizes will be available? Yeah, so there's actually a lot of great prizes this year, uh, including a family season pass to the Onalaska Aquatic Center. Okay. We have free rounds of golf. We have gift cards. Um, tickets to the Children's Museum and stuff like that. So a lot of fun things for uh, not only kids, but you know, just even adults that are attending, so. Okay, great. And this is an event that has been in the community for a few years, or is this new? It's our second annual second one, year. so we're okay. looking to continue and make it a staple community event going forward. All right, great. Anything that uh, people should know before they attend? Dress for the weather, because since we don't know if it's <laughs> yeah. going to be, you know, chilly or so. Last year we were very blessed with uh, good weather. It was sunny, it was warm, so mm -hmm. people can wear, you know, short sleeves. Yeah. But uh, obviously if the snow sticks around a little longer than we anticipate, then uh, just dress for the weather so that way, you know, you can keep your little ones around and enjoy all the fun that's yeah. going on. Yeah, so. okay. All right, great point there. Okay, so next Saturday on Alaska High School, and starting at 1, or does it start before? We'll open the doors to attendees at 1230, okay. um, so they can enjoy the food trucks and all the vendors first and get registered if they're not yet and check in and then we'll start the egg hunts at 1 but it will go until 3 30. Okay so lots of fun activities. Uh, will the Easter Bunny be there? Absolutely. Yes <laughs> okay <laughs> good to know that. Okay well thank you so much for being here to tell us about your event. Thank Thanks you. for having us. All right stay with us we're back after this. Comfort, style, and savings. Come in now for the FlexSteel Spring Gallery Custom Order and Floor Sample Sale. Get 50% off select floor models and 40% off all custom orders. International Furniture, I-90, Exit 2, La Crosse. Here's California banker Eric Hovde, running for U.S. Senate. But Hovde's lifestyle? Pure California. CEO of a billion-dollar bank. 
Here's Hubdi's over $7 million Laguna Beach mansion. And three years in a row, Eric Hubdi was named one of Orange County's most influential residents. Mm. Multimillionaire California banker Eric Hubdi. On Wisconsin's side, don't bank on it. When Senate is responsible for the content of this ad. I have type 2 diabetes, but I manage it well. It's a little pill with a big story to tell. I take once daily Jardians. At each day start, as time went on, it was easy to see. I'm lowering my A1C. Jardians works 24 7 in your body to flush out some sugar. And for adults with type 2 diabetes and known heart disease, Jardians can lower the risk of cardiovascular death too. Serious side effects may include ketoacidosis that may be fatal, dehydration that can lead to sudden worsening of kidney function, and genital yeast or urinary tract infections. A rare life-threatening bacterial infection in the skin of the perineum could occur. Stop Jardians and call your doctor right away if you have symptoms of this infection, ketoacidosis, or an allergic reaction. You may have increased risk for lower limb loss. Call your doctor right away if you have symptoms of infection in your legs or feet. Taking Jardians with a sulfonuria or insulin may cause low blood sugar. Jardians. At Blaine's Farm and Fleet, we get you outdoors because we get you. Whether you're ready to hit the road, tackle the yard, or start a new project, we get you the right products at the right prices. Like 36-pound bags of Estate Crabgrass Preventer, $32.99. 20-pound bags of Blaine's brand Cardinal Songbird Food, $14.99. Rewards members save an extra buck. And five quarts of Blaine's Full Synthetic Motor Oil, $23.99. Just $20.99 for rewards members. We get you outdoors because we get you at Blaine's Farm and Fleet. Comfort, style, and savings. Come in now for the FlexSteel Spring Gallery Custom Order and Floor Sample Sale. Get 50% off select floor models and 40% off all custom orders. International Furniture, I-90, Exit 2, La Crosse. There's a lot to love on the Drew Barrymore Show. We just incredible, lost out delectable. I want to play and be silly and fun. I'm like in it with you. No stop, we're just getting oh. started. Hit hot, yeah, hit I'm so in love with you, I can't handle it. Oh my God! Did we just become best friends? Let's make it happen, Captain. Weekdays at 3 on News 8. The First Warren Weather App. Download it today. Yo, camping buddy. Okay, you guys ready? Dude, I thought you were driving. I thought you were driving. Oh, I never said I was driving. I, I definitely can't drive. <laughs> <laughs> if you're high, just don't drive. It's illegal everywhere. If you feel different, you drive different. See the stories you missed or watch them again on our YouTube page. Or find us at news8000.com. Welcome back at 6.52, time for your morning news now. The former deputy director of the Milwaukee Election Commission found guilty on three misdemeanor counts of election fraud and one felony count of misconduct in public office. Kimberly Zapata admitted requesting three military ballots under fake voter names and sending them to a state representative. Her attorneys argued she aimed to expose flaws in Wisconsin's electoral system as a whistleblower. Prosecutors told the jury to focus on her actions, not her intentions, stating she damaged the very system she was entrusted to safeguard. So what did she tell us? She told us that she fabricated three individuals for the purpose of having ballots issued. That she did this on her work laptop, the computer issued by the city. That she did this using the my vote, or the WIS vote system to gain the address that she had these ballots sent to. Zapata facing up to five years in prison and as much as $13,000 in fines. A sentencing hearing has been set for early May. Parts of the federal government could briefly shut down this weekend despite a bipartisan budget deal. The issue is time and whether the package can overcome hurdles by the end of the day tomorrow. Currently, it appears to have enough support to pass, but lawmakers who oppose the deal have ways to slow down the process. In the House, expediting with a suspension of the rules requires a supermajority. And in the Senate, a speedy unanimous consent vote fails if a single person objects. 
Winona State University has a new leader at its helm. The Minnesota State Colleges and Universities Board of Trustees announcing Kenneth Jans will assume the role of president, effective immediately. Jans has been serving as interim president since August, following the departure of former president Scott Olson. This isn't Jans' first experience with the university. From 2008 till 2023, he held the positions of associate vice president for academic affairs and chief information officer. Have you ever dreamed of trading places with the conductor of the Lacrosse Symphony Orchestra? If so, now's your chance. The orchestra's annual conductor wannabe competition is back and they're looking for the next maestro. Contestants were announced yesterday, along with the nonprofits they'll be raising money for. It's up to you to vote for your favorite candidate. Each vote must be a minimum of $2. Those proceeds will be split between the candidate's chosen charity and the orchestra. As we all know in our community, we love collaborations and helping a lot of people all at the same time. It just makes it a lot more fun. The winner and runner-up who raised the most money will have the chance to make their conductor debuts at the symphony's May 4th concert. The competition starts today and runs until April 30th. The names of the wannabes and their charities are posted on our digital platforms. Rudy's Drive-In is back open for the season. The fence came down yesterday, marking the kickoff of the 91st season in La Crosse. You can expect the same products the Cooley region has come to know and love for decades. But there is a warning that it might take a little longer to get your treats because they are short-staffed. So if you know anybody that's good on a pair of roller skates, tell them Rudy's is needing the extra help. Temperatures this morning starting in the 20s, including 27 in La Crosse, 22 in Eau Claire. Uh, cloudy today, but mainly dry and still chilly. Highs in the upper 30s. Snow arrives tonight into tomorrow morning. Winter weather advisory for all areas. General one to four inch snowfall expected. Maybe some localized five to six inch totals, especially far south. Uh, light icing in spots as well, but a wintry Friday morning commute, so be prepared for that. Little break Saturday, more unsettled conditions Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. Thank you, Bill. We'll take a look at this Roman statue dating back nearly 2,000 years ago was found by construction workers building a parking lot in the United Kingdom. A digger driver uncovered the marble head of a Roman lady at 16th century country estate in Peterborough last year. Two weeks later, a bust was found close to the site of the original find. The relics were then cleaned, examined and reassembled by a conservator. The sculpture was dated to the 1st or 2nd century. The estate said it's believed the 9th Earl bought the sculpture during his tours to Italy in the 1760s and brought it back. It said it's a mystery how the head and bust ended up where they did. Explanations range from a bungled burglary to someone discarding the statue, which later got covered by dirt. Thanks so much for starting your morning with us on News 8 Now this morning. We will see you back here at noon. Have a great day.